your shadow is the part of you that you don't like. That's a good way of putting it. You don't like, you don't want to admit exists, and you don't want other people to know exists. Uh, and you look at your actual life and you say, what was motivating me at these moments? You can tell that not always is it uh, super self-evident what's motivating you. Uh, certainly from my perspective, there's been a number of times where I go, what the hell was I thinking? And of course, what that means is that there was some other force, you know, maybe the shadow that's actually interjecting its will into the situation. From your perspective, what is the shadow and what sort of work needs to be done around it, uh, particularly for men? Yeah, well, the beautiful thing about the rational mind is that you can create rational lies, right? You can create rational lies. And so to rationalize is sometimes to create rational lies. And so your rational mind can become hijacked by the shadow, by this part of you that is, well, maybe I'll just say this directly. The shadow is the psychological part of you that you don't want other people to know about, that um, you don't want to necessarily admit to, your insecurities, your fears, your doubts, your worries, your pain that you don't want to deal with, right? So, um, you know, maybe the pain from not having your father around as a boy or the pain from uh, being broken up with in a past relationship that you never really dealt with. And so there's this insecurity that's showing up in your current relationship, right? Because you don't feel good enough. So <clears throat> your inferiorities reside within the shadow. And your there's a great saying by uh, a guy named Francis Weller where he said that your pain has its own intelligence. So when you sabotage, right? When you even ask that question, like, what the hell was I thinking? Well, you cognitively and consciously likely weren't really thinking. This part of you, this pain, this shadow was in the driver's seat. And so it was calling the shots. It was convincing you to, to you know, message that girl on Instagram, even though you're in a relationship. It was convincing you to open up the web browser and watch porn at one o'clock in the morning when you have a big presentation the next day. It was convincing you to, you know, have the extra drink, uh, even though you know you have to like be up early the next morning to whatever. So your shadow is the part of you that you don't like. That's a good way of putting it. You don't like, you don't want to admit exists, and you don't want other people to know exists. And so our part of our work and a huge part of what I put into the book is twofold. One, this shadow is the thing that causes sabotage, right? So Jung said that um, the shadow forms an unconscious snag uh, that aims to thwart our most well-meaning intentions. So essentially, when you set a goal for yourself, you want to put on some muscle, you want to lose some weight, you want to save some money, you know, whatever the goal is, what sabotages you is this part of you, your insecurities, your fears, your doubts, your worries, your shadow. And so we have to begin to start to look at what the contents of the shadow actually are. So for many of us, as an example, in childhood, we had to abandon some type of authenticity in order to survive or belong, maybe with our family, maybe with you know, kids at school, uh, maybe with friends. And so we learn to negate or hide certain parts of ourselves. So I'll give you an example very quickly. If you grew up in a household where, let's just say that your, your father was, had a lot of anger, right? So maybe sometimes he had lost his temper, he was volatile, he'd yell, maybe he'd yell at you, maybe he'd yell at your mom, you know, maybe he'd yell at your siblings, but you were just generally scared of his anger. And then you heard your mom say things like, don't ever be like your father right? He's such an angry man. Don't be like him. Uh, or men are dangerous or some version of that. It's likely that what you did to cope with that was to disconnect from your anger, to actually disconnect from your assertiveness. And so what's actually in your shadow is your assertiveness and your anger, your capacity to say no, your ability to say boundaries, your ability to say, I don't like that in a relationship or with friends or with family. And so part of the shadow work that you might be doing is reclaiming that part in a healthy way, you know, so that you can actually be assertive so that you can say, no, this is, this is the classic nice guy, right? The classic nice, nice guy that's out there is afraid of his own anger and afraid of his own assertiveness. 
So that's a little bit about what the shadow is. 